Hi there! Well, welcome to another math lesson. We're going to have a look at completing the square. And if the square is of this form, here we have ax squared plus bx. And very often, we'll also have a c there. Okay, but uh, let's ignore the c for just now and see how would I complete the square if I had it of the form ax squared plus bx. Well, first of all, you might ask, what on earth do you mean completing the square? Well, if we look at ax squared, we could maybe rather imagine it as a times x times x and b times x times 1. And this can then be called, or we can consider this maybe, as length times breadth times height and here we can see our height is uh, here's then an example and there's our height our breadth and our length A and we can do the same for this part length times breadth times height there we have our length our height and our width or however you want to call it depends on which way you're looking at it and then this expression here would now represent the volume of each of these so let's for a moment forget about the algebra behind all of this and let's just look at a square and a square block where the face is a square and its width is a whatever a is and then we have another block where the height is B or actually X and the width is B and its fatness or its thickness is just one so if it's just one I'm gonna call it a sheet this is rather a sheet than a block so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to divide my block my square block into sheets which means for every whatever a is let's say a is four like in this example I'm going to divide my block into four sheets, each with a width of one. And there I've got my four sheets. Now each four sheet has now the dimensions x by x by one. So we've got x by x by one, which means now the volume is x squared times one, which is just x squared. That's the volume of each sheet. Now this we already had a sheet but what I want to do is for each orange sheet that I have, in other words each square, I want to divide, I want to give each of those squares a piece of the green block. And since there are a of them, in this case it looks like there's four of them, I would have to divide my uh, green block into four pieces. If there were ten of them, my green block has to be divided into ten pieces, which means the length is now, or the width, is now divided into however many sheets I have. Now, remember, if I had A as the width, I would divide it into A pieces, which means each width will now be the B divided by A. Depends on how many sheets, orange sheets I have. And what we'll now do is give each of these pillars, these green pillars, to a sheet. Now there'll be the same number of pillars as orange sheets. And then this is what we'll have. So what do we have? Well, we have a, let's put that value there, and value there. We have a, um, for each sheet, that is x by x, in other words, x squared volume, I have a um, pillar, and this pillar has a width of b over 2, uh, b over a, a width, this total width is b over a. Now I've divided it in two and I'll explain now why I did that. Okay, but this total width is b over two, uh, over a, sorry. 
which means what do I have in total? Well, I have for each sheet x squared, that's the uh, volume of the, sh the orange sheet, and the volume of the green pillar, it still has a height of x, and it's got a width of b over a. So as you can see, each pillar has the dimensions x by b over a by 1, because the width is 1. The thickness is 1. So its volume is b over a times x. Therefore, what we have is we have for each sheet is x squared. If each sheet has a pillar, which has a volume of b over a times x, okay, and um, that's simply just remember it was the original b by x that's divided into a pieces. So b times x was the volume divided by a, a into a pieces. Now of this I have a of that. Okay, however many a was. A was 4, I've got now 4 of these sets. If A was 10, I had 10 of these sets. If A was 50, I had 50 of these sets. And if A was 1, I would have 1 of these sets. So this is just why this expression is multiplied by A. And just simplified or written a little bit differently, maybe a little bit more um, pleasing to the eye, is written like that. Now what we do is we divide the green pillar in half so that each half can be placed on, an, on two adjacent, uh, adjacent sides. Okay. And then that's what we get. Now remember, the green pillar had a width of B over A. Now that width has been halved again. So it's now divided by B over 2A. That's the, this width here, B over 2A. And now we see to complete this square, let's just remove that. If we wanted to complete this square, we had to go and borrow somewhere this orange, because I have uh, this, this red. Originally I only had the orange and the green. So somewhere I had to go borrow this uh, little square here. And it must now fit into that part. And now I've completed the square. Now remember that this square will have the same width, length and width, and it will be a square, its face will be a square, will be the same as this b over 2a, and the same with this one, b over 2a, that's why it's a square, so if I enlarge it, this is what that square would look like. And this little blue block that I went and borrowed somewhere, now has the dimensions of b over 2a, by b over 2a by 1. And if I just simplify that, that is half of b divided by a squared. Half of b divided by a squared. But now remember, we don't just borrow one of these. I borrow one for each um, orange sheet that I originally had. And I have a orange sheets. So I have to borrow A of them. So uh, that's where this expression comes from. This is what I need to borrow, but I need to for, for each sheet, but I need to borrow A of those. So I borrow A times that. And when that is simplified, um, this is what I get. That is what I get. Well, how did we get there? Maybe you ask. Well, just remember that that square, because it's outside the bracket, belongs to each factor inside the bracket. So it's b squared over 4a squared. And one of those a's cancel with one of those a's. So in the end, I'm still just dividing with 1a. Okay, maybe pause the video and just make sure you see where I get this whole expression from. But this is now what I have. I've got A complete squares. A of these complete squares if I borrowed enough blue blocks to fit each 
orange sheet. Let's look at that um, that whole square. Now this whole square now has a width from this end to that end of x, which is this width, plus that width, which we remember is b over 2a. I'm writing with my mouse here, so it looks ugly, I'm sorry. b over 2a, that's that width. So in total, it's got a width of x plus b over 2a. You see the, the height is the same thing. The width is still 1. So that is why length times breadth uh, times the, um, or actually that's height, length times height times width, okay, it doesn't really matter, depends on what you're looking at it from. And then we see here we got, we've got a perfect square, And but we don't just have one of them, we have A of them. So in total, I've got A of these perfect squares. But now since we had to go and borrow some of these blue blocks, we owe, somewhere we owe this, because we had to go and borrow it. Which means what we have is A of these block, these squares that have a width of x plus half of b divided by a that's the, the length of each square, but I could only get it if I borrowed this, and that's why this is a negative. I had to go and borrow. I owe this somewhere, so that's why that's a negative. Okay, I had to go and borrow that many of um, the blue blocks. Okay, so algebraically, how does this make sense? Well, you could have done it algebraically and done it much quicker, but some people, I suppose, prefer looking at this in a, in a more pictorial way but if I were to do this algebraically and I want to complete this square you'll see it's the exact same thing first I take out A as a common factor now A is not a common factor which just means that my B term has to be divided by A so that when I multiply back I will still have the same thing that I used to have AX squared and then when the second term is multiplied I um, can cancel the A's. Now you'll recall that to complete this square we have to add a half of this term squared. So B over A, half of that is B over 2A squared. We have to add that, but I can't just add something. If I add something I have to go and subtract it somewhere else. And that is why if I add it, I also need to go and subtract what I added. Now, what did I add? I added b over 2a, isn't it? No, no. I added b over 2a inside a bracket. And outside of that bracket, that b over 2a must be multiplied with an a. So I actually didn't just add b over 2a, I added a times b over 2a squared, sorry I forgot the square and this if simplified just becomes what did I actually add? I actually added b over 2 squared and then this a comes out out of the bracket but he must get a square if he comes out and he's in the denominator so he gets divided so I'm just still dividing with 1a. So that's what I added and that's why I had to go and subtract that. And you should understand this is quite, this is exactly what we've done so far. Okay. Originally, this is what we did in the beginning, was to get each of the sheets, we divided each of the sheets and, and the uh, blue block into sorry not the blue block the green block into a enough parts to fit each orange block that is why B was divided by A and A was taken out as a common factor and then we just had to go and work out how much must be added 
and because I had to add that a times this is what was added originally and that has to be subtracted as well for the number of times I go and borrow it and I hope that makes sense so let's look at a few examples and you'll see actually the theory behind this seems much more difficult than the problem actually is 